Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are going to finish off Shane Dawson's absolute masterpiece of a book called I Hate My Selfie. What more can I say, really? That's what we're going to do. Can't wait, really looking forward to this. Grab yourself some chocolate. I have so much chocolate around me at the moment. My mum and sister sent me a bunch of chocolate. Lovely of them. Nomo, this, if you're a vegan, right, or just dairy-free, lactose intolerant, what the fuck ever. If you're missing, like, the galaxy type, like, melty, you know, creamy. Not sponsored by Nomo, which I was, but I am sponsored for today's video by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions, yes, millions, maybe even billions of people come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Skillshare is for anyone, whether you're an everyday working creative or maybe you're just a little bit interested, you're a little bit inspired that day, you want to try something new. Skillshare probably has the class for you. Skillshare includes a combination of video lessons and class projects. And members get access to thousands of classes and feedback from a community of millions of people. Wow. And Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. So unlike my videos, there's absolutely no ads. Plus, I'll let you in on a secret. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Wow. Massive savings. And in honor of today's video topic, let's check out what creative writing courses Skillshare currently has. Here we go, creative personal writing. Write the real you. Oh, how apt, dearest Shane. By Ashley C. Ford. Check it out, why not? What's stopping you? So check out Skillshare today, it might be a laugh, and the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link in my description box will get access to a free trial of a premium membership. So go and explore your creativity and have fun and all that. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get on with the pain. Essay number 10, the mean girl got fat. But Shane's rejoicing at that, isn't he? So Shane is working at a weight loss center as a salesperson at this point in his life. And there's some unrealistic dialogue between him and a coworker. New video, same Shane. Anyway, his first ever client is his old high school bully. Because of course, what a perfect tale of revenge porn in which Shane can be the empathetic hero that we need but do not deserve. Something something the dark night. I didn't have back muscles. The bitch was referring to the rolls of fat that were squished underneath my shirt between my shoulder blades and ass. She was a soulless demon monster and now she was sitting before me, 300 pounds and potentially my first sale. So her name's Lacey, the high school bully, and she got pregnant. She's a single parent at 20. I wanted to cry, but I also wanted to punch her in the face for calling me six pack back fat for four years. Six pack back fat. Try saying that 10 times very fast. It's just a, I'm just, it's just a tongue twister. That's all I'm saying. I'm not being mean. Also, Shane Dawson loves women. Shane, in the end, signs her up to the program and then reveals that he was the person that she used to bully at school and they hug it out. Oh, lovely. Ah, oh, sweet. I was upset that she didn't remember how horribly she treated me, but I guess I never thought about her reasons for doing so. She must have been dealing with a lot of issues that made her take out her anger on me. It doesn't make it right, but it makes it slightly understandable. Isn't this story nice that Shane the empath can finally have some closure from, you know, his horrible high school days, even though he brings up this kind of mentality all the time? But okay. There is also the possibility that none of this actually happened, <laughs> but it's left up to our own artistic interpretation. Like at the end of 500 Days of Summer, the theory that Tom and Summer never have that final phone, phone call, final conversation on the bench. There is a theory that it all just happened in Tom's head and it was his way of having closure on that, on that relationship. This essay is exactly like 500 Days of Summer. The next essay is called My Girl Space Friends. Shane is telling us how he's always had female friends growing up. I'm not really sure what happened or why we drifted apart, but I do remember a bizarre incident during which I punched her in the vagina to see if it hurt as bad as getting punched in the balls. 
charming. I can't see why he didn't end up getting a girlfriend until he was in his early 20s. I met my next girl space friend when I was 11 years old. I'm pretty sure she even let me finger her once. It wasn't sexual at all. It was more just to see what was in there. I'm cringing right now. Shame. Why do you do this to us? Like, why, why, do you, why do you have these thoughts and then put the thoughts on the paper and then get the paper published to torture? Am I existing just to suffer right now? Shane Dawson. I'm pretty sure she was schizophrenic and I'm pretty sure I was a pathological liar. What do you mean was? I can't stand judgmental people. The second somebody lifts their eyebrow at a situation, I cut them out of my life. I have never believed a sentence less. Didn't you really badly judge the hairdresser in the first essay of this very book? Remember your own law, Shane. Remember your own canon. Anyway, so the rest of the essay is boring, so I'm just not going to tell you the rest because I'm going to spare you. The next one is called My Strange Addictions. And in this essay, Shane is telling us how he has an addiction to everything, especially food. Another one of my addictions was friends. Yeah, I think Trisha Paytas begs to differ. No, not the television show about a fictional New York City that has no black people in it. Shane, I appreciate the sentiment, but you really aren't the one to champion this moral standpoint. Sorry, I had to take a quick chocolate break because... My sugar levels need to be up for this video. Shane goes on to tell us, ironically, that after he lost, not him being ironic, I'm being ironic here. After he lost 150 pounds of body weight, he became addicted to the artificial sweetener. Sweetener? Sweetener? Splendor. And ate, consumed up to 250 packets of it a day. Shane Dawson, how are you still alive? This is concerning. The overdose of Splendor mixed with my unhealthy diet of chicken and vegetables and nothing else brought me to the hospital six times in one year. He gets really dehydrated and he goes crazy at Disney World, so then he gets taken to the hospital because of this. Doctor, how much fake sugar are you eating? Me. 250 packets a day, usually a couple gallons of iced tea, sometimes a 12 pack of diet soda. Doctor, when you came in here today, you were so dehydrated, you were inches away from slipping into a coma, your brain was malfunctioning. If you've watched any of like his recent series, he's always drinking diet root beer. This is concerning. Shane Dawson, get help or continue getting help for this. This is worrying. We don't see eye to eye on possibly anything, but please don't accidentally put yourself into a coma because of your artificial sweet. Get help. Seek help, please. I implore you. Not that you'll ever watch this video. This is a huge reason why I don't drink or do any kind of drugs. I can't imagine what my life would be like if I tried cocaine. I'm sure my house would be super clean. Is that what everyone else does on coke? Because all I used to do on coke was more coke. <laughs> the next essay is called YouTube Got Me Fired. I've always been a hard working guy. It's actually one of my downfalls. <laughs> I love the humble bragging. Somebody please get this man a Netflix series. Won't someone please think of the Netflix viewers? Shane's trying to do some get rich quick schemes and it's vaguely relatable actually because me and my friends used to do similar when we were kids. I was going to be a success and I was going to do it the American way. Make a bunch of shitty products and force my neighbours to buy them because they felt bad for me. One was a frozen ice cream pop that was made from fat free yogurt. Yogurt. I said that like an American then. Fat free yogurt and peanut butter. It literally ripped off my taste buds and made my tongue bleed for two hours. Once, me and my friend, we'd watch Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory one too many times and we became inspired to become chocolatiers at the tender age of eight years old. And our brilliant plan included just melting down pre-existing bars of Cadbury dairy milk into like little chocolate moulds and trying to sell them. It didn't work, so we just ended up eating them ourselves, but they kind of tasted a little, a little... A little bit crappier because it's just melted down chocolate remolded so it loses some of its yeah so we just ate subpar versions of the original chocolate bars that we'd paid for and made no profit on anyway shane makes friendship bracelets and sells one to an old lady after being really sweet with her and that's a nice story but oh wait he then fucking ruins it this is shane dawson we're talking about so here we go now i'm not gonna lie i was playing with her emotions i knew that she was lonely you are a little shit, Shane Dawson. I don't take back the stuff I said just now about please look after yourself, but you're a little shit nonetheless. <laughs> Shane starts going on about his job as a professional weight loss salesperson. And it's quite funny because he says he was an 18-year-old boy who had no idea how to help people with their fit. 
physiological problems and had no nutritional knowledge whatsoever. And yet he was in charge of dictating to people something quite personalised, losing weight. And yet he was 18 and had no knowledge. He says he was given five days of nutritional training and then that's it. Like, why is everything so half assed all of the time throughout the world? Why? I was the gay looking husband and they were my unattractive, annoying, significant others. What was that about not being judgmental an essay or so back? It's kind of like no one bothers to proofread YouTuber books. Ever. It's like a YouTuber can just shit on some pages and be like, smear it around for a bit and then go, yeah, that'll do, fuck it. Sell it to Barnes and Noble, we'll make a million quid in profit. Anyway, Shane realises that his job is a facade and it makes money out of vulnerable people, yet he becomes their most successful salesperson in the entire county or country. I don't know how America works. I'd have bigwigs come up to me at conventions and ask, how do you do it? How do you sell so much? And my response was simple. I care. Written without a wit of irony, I assume. I can't keep making sarcastic remarks, Shane, about you being so empathetic because my audience will tire of it. God knows I'm already tired of it. And yeah, you make it so easy. I masturbated at work a lot. I'm not going to give anyone context here. I'm just going to say that line to fill the void in the room. Anyway, Shane gets fired for vlogging at work one time, but they also fire all of the employees who featured in the vlog. I know this was back in 2009, but this feels a little bit overboard to me. Interesting. The next essay is called Astral Projection. And the title of this sounded promising, but I say in my script, I'm sure the content won't live up to it. Shane's grandmother had her fridge within arms grabbing distance and I'm pretty sure she peed into a big gulp cup. Why is everyone in Shane's family just Shane, but I'm assuming with slightly variations in haircuts? Anyway, Shane has a dream that his deceased grandmother tells him he's destined for greatness because of course, of course, feels vaguely biblical, doesn't it? Oh, had a dream, a dream, had a premonition that God came down and told me how I was just destined for, for great things. I would rather read the Bible than this. That's what I'm saying. When I was 13, I started having dreams in which I would float around my neighborhood and spy on people. Never change, you creep. Never change. So he starts talking about astral projection. That's... As the title of this essay suggests, he talks about astral projection. And you know me by now. If you're a watcher of my channel, you know that usually I would be all over this ship. I'd be ship, shit. I'd be lapping it up. But it's Shane, so he's probably just making it all up. So I just, I don't know. I don't care. Actually. Whole video can be condensed down to me just going. So he tries astral projecting. And then he sees some sort of like sleep paralysis demon and he gets into an anime fight like some Jujutsu Kaisen. Am I reading a Shane Dawson book or am I reading a niece, one of Anision's failed books? I ran my spirit body into him and tackled him to the ground. It turned into a long, violent battle between me and this cold, dark mass. Then I suddenly woke up. And it was all a dream. So I feel like either the essays were getting shorter or my patience was just wearing really thin because it feels like we're smashing through these, which is great for me. The next one is called Just a Pretty Face. Shane is complaining that his face was pretty when he was a teenager. I don't know. I'm still shocked and slightly offended that I was never molested. I have had enough of this book. It's too edgy five me. So basically Shane is his own mother or something. My mum and I would drive around the city for hours, blaring Paula Abdul and talk about how much my father didn't understand us. We would get froyo of extra toppings because it was our cheat day and because we deserved it. I even remember going to a lingerie shop with her to find her something for her anniversary. She wanted something sassy yet functional and nothing that screamed, I'm willing to try anal. Shame, please stop talking about your own mum this way, please, I beg. If my mum had died, I think I would have been able to take her place pretty easily. I mean, having sex with my father would have been weird. Do you know what? I'll give him this. Sometimes, am I going to say that? I can't believe I'm going to say this. I'm going to lay my reputation on the line by saying this. 
There is a tendency on the internet to be a little bit too reactionary, a little bit too pearl clutchy about like certain things. Not serious things, but just like the dumb jokes like that. And I try not to indulge that because I go to comedy nights or comedy club, comedy like stand up open mic nights. I go to them or I used to before, you know, everything shut down. And there are things that he says sometimes that really wouldn't be out of place at a open mic because open mics do tend to be on the edgier side because you know shock is a part of humor but then you remember that his audience is children and children would have been buying this and maybe it's just not that appropriate i'm a grown-up adult and if i go to a comedy night and hear about someone making jokes about having sex with their fathers to replace their dead mothers yeah i'd probably laugh but is this appropriate for children mm, no Anyway, I wonder if saying any of that will bite me in the ass one day and I get cancelled for it. Don't care, mate. <laughs> it was a really hot day and my boy tits were dripping. He really paints a picture, doesn't he? If the paintbrush was being dipped in a jar of hot shit and being spread on parchment paper made of manure. I'm not going any further with this metaphor. A lady mistakes Shane and his own mother at the beach as a lesbian couple. I asked my older brother for advice and this is where I kind of went off for a good 10 minutes, I had to Google a bunch of stuff because I said, wait, 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 Shane has an older brother. Has this been mentioned anywhere ever? Why don't I know this or do I? I can't remember anymore. There's too much lore. His name isn't even Dawson, it's Shane Lee Yor. Where did Dawson come from? I have so many questions. Maybe I should make a docu-series about Shane and see if he will let me follow him around for a week. This is fascinating. All I can really say now about that, me last night writing this, is maybe your book isn't that good if it causes someone to get distracted and go on Google for 10 minutes. So Shane has two brothers, it turns out. Yeah. So anyway, the climax of this essay, the culmination is... A cashier finally calls him sir, and then he cries the end. My leg twin. Shane reveals to us that he's constantly fixating on other dudes' bodies and wondering what they would look like naked, because he's constantly... Comp it's not like a perversion thing or like a, a sexual thing. It's him co comparing his own body to others. One day a few years back, I was lying in bed contemplating whether or not I should brush my teeth, but instead watched 12 hours of children's television. I have a sick obsession with children's television. Uh-huh. Tell that to the judge. So he notices that guest star on the Disney Channel has the same legs as him. It's like when Joey from Friends meets his tan twin in Vegas, the roulette or the blackjack. It's like that, except even stupider. So after seeing his leg twin on the Disney Channel, Shane looks up this guy's IMDb, finds his Twitter, follows him on Twitter, and then tweets at him in the hopes that he will get a follow back. The guy actually does follow him back and wants to hang out with him. Shane is 23. I don't know how old this person is. I got there a little early because I wanted to see him walk in. I wanted to see those legs in motion. <laughs> You're a strange little man. I hopped out of my car and I walked up to him. I was hoping that maybe he would look at my legs and notice that we were leg twins, so I even tried to mimic his walk so he would get some kind of leg deja vu. How is this a real book? That is kind of funny though, like it's weird enough that it is funny. This leg twin turns out to be a fan of Shane's, that's why he wanted to you know, meet up with him. Not because he thought they might have the same legs, but because he's a, he's a follower, he's a fan. What a perfect storm of absolute nonsense. I could see his lopsided nipples poking through his exercise shirt and all I could think was, I wonder if they have black spots around the areolas too. I started undressing him in my head and I'm going to be honest, it got super creepy. Reading that, the only thought that popped into my head was, Shane, how old is this person? Why are you like this? Next time you write things like this, maybe specify that, hey, they were 25, so still creepy, but it's not illegal. Shane's bubble is popped when the leg twin orders a chicken breast cooked in no oil and with no extra ranch for dipping and no diet sodas. Turns out the leg twin is actually a dude bro twin and he goes to the gym every day. He lifts his arm and Shane sees the shirt ride up. So I'm thinking, you know, how is he wearing a crop top? Because he gets to see that this guy has a six pack. And it seems that Shane Dawson has made a severe and continuous lapse in judgment. 
This man doesn't have chubby legs. He has thick, with two C's, muscular legs. Oh, the humanity. You know, we got so close to not having any more horrible references to shitting. And yet, I'm sure he had just taken a huge healthy bowel movement. And here I was with IBS and a stomach full of ranch dressing that was sure to come out of my ass like I got bukkakied at a gangbang. I am so disappointed in that sentence. I'm laughing, but it's to stop myself from crying. I will continue to lie on my bed retweeting food porn and watching television shows I'm criminally too old for. Yeah, tell that one to the judge too, Shane. The next essay is called Shock Tuber. My Twitter wasn't blowing up because of a former child star's death or even because of another hurricane with a waitress's name. It was blowing up because I was supposedly a racist. Oh boy, here we go. But when people say I'm a racist, it really gets under my skin. My superior perfect white skin. This is clearly... Clearly, obviously a joke. It's meant to be inflammatory. It's meant to, you know, because he's saying I'm not a racist and then also saying something that is clearly, you know, racially charged, inflammatory, but as a joke. Like that's, you know, humor is, humor is set up in punchline. It's you think you're going from point A to point B, but really you're going from point A to point C. It's surprise. Like that's the basis of a lot of humor. Right. So it's clearly a joke. But what a bad joke for future Shane Dawson to have to deal with. It eventually blew over and I went back to waiting for Lindsay Lohan to die. This isn't a good look either. But how was past Shane Dawson to know? Seems that all of Shane Dawson's problems stem from past Shane Dawson making ill judgments. Shane says he can't help being a shock tuber. That's what he's calling it. Shock tuber. Shocking people. It's not a phase mum. It's just who he is as a person. And there's a whole conversation that I've written in the script that I'm going to read from. So Loki hate myself a little bit for that, but I'll deal with it. So he did some sort of show at school and his school was really diverse. And he played a stereotype. It was a sketch full of stereotypes to an all white audience. It would have been received with crickets and comfortable laughter. But to my diverse class, it was received with uproarious laughter and a standing ovation. One of the teachers asked him if he thinks the skit is racist. And he's like, how could satire be considered racist? Han said, I don't demeaning. Han used words that were hurtful. Sure as hell, Han said I was superior to anyone. Luckily, I had a friend stick up for me and risk getting detention doing so. My friend happened to be black. How, a friend, how was what he did racist? Teacher, he was showcasing stereotypes. He was encouraging people to laugh African-Americans the way they act. But some of us do act like that. Well, that doesn't make it right. No, it makes it relatable. I know people who act foolish and not going to say that word. And those people are ridiculous to me. Shane wasn't making fun of black people. He was making fun of a group of black people who act ridiculous. Yeah, this doesn't, this, yeah, this isn't doing anything like in your favor, Shane, I don't think. Well, I disagree. Well, you're not black. You don't understand what it feels like for white people to walk on eggshells around us. I can, I can understand that sentiment. Scared to say anything that could be misconstrued as racist, making us feel like we should be treated with kid gloves because we can't take the fact that our skin is a different colour and some people don't like us. I like laughing at shit I relate to and I like that a white person was doing it. It made me feel more part of this society and less like an outcast. I can understand the merits of that, right? I can. Um, but doesn't all of this low-key sound a bit like white saviour syndrome? Oh, thank God, Shane Dawson, the messiah. The absolute paragon at bridging the gap between interracial relations, Shane Dor- He actually even says in the next line, now I know it sounds like I'm making that conversation up. It's too perfect and too well-crafted to be an actual conversation between a high school student and his teacher, but it really happened. Yeah, I kind of don't think it happened either. I've absolutely heard that argument from like, you know, a diverse range of people, but people saying this like, to defend Shane Dawson, okay. Maybe I'm just cynical. I, d- I don't know. It just read a bit too much like, tee hee, see, I'm a great person. Me the empath. The next and final essay is called Prom. And, you know, what I've always wanted to know more of, Shane Dawson's prom experience. Because it's not like he ever makes any references to... Okay. This entire experience might throw you into a suicidal state. No comment. So Shane posits that at every high school, there's a crazy tree and that's where the crazy people hang out. And that's, well, where people like Shane hang out. Okay. Then there was Brandon, who was a loose cannon with slight serial killer tendencies. One time he brought a laser gun to school and gave Pam five bucks to let him try it on her. I don't remember exactly how it went down, but I do remember she almost died. 
Maybe he's onto something with the crazy tree theory then, I don't know. Finally, there was my lesbian friend and future prom date Kelly. Did I mention she was a lesbian? Yeah, we'll get to that later. Kelly had lots of stickers on her backpack that said aliens over people. She was a true freak, which is why we had so much in common. <laughs> I'm feeling personally attacked right now. So Kelly invites Shane to prom because her dad will pay for all of it, including the Denny's meal. So I hopped in my never before washed car and headed over to my date's house. I picked up that wrist flower thing on the way there and then accidentally sat in it. To say it was destroyed would be an understatement. I did to that wrist flower thing what God did to the dinosaurs. Extinct. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting dumber the more I read this, but when I read that for the first time last, it genuinely made me laugh. So thanks, Shane. Good one. Maybe I was having bubble guts from all the sheet cake and refried beans I'd had the night before. And he ruins it as <laughs> Shane giveth and Shane taketh away in a boiling vat of shit. Kelly, his friend, looks beautiful in her dress. So Shane says, you look amazing. You look like a child prostitute, but happy about it. One of their friends gets her period at the Denny's whilst in the white dress. And proms in an hour. What's Shane to do? They get to the prom and Shane just stands at a table eating um, the food. And a drunk teacher comes along and has a realistic conversation with him that I'm going to read from again, apparently. What are you doing over here? Raising my risk of type 2 diabetes? You don't already have that? I know, I'm an underachiever. You should be out there dancing. Me? Dance? I'd rather die while masturbating and be found by my mother. That was specific. I think about it a lot. Every time I masturbate, I think, this could be it. Maybe I should leave a note. You do realise I'm your teacher, right? <laughs> you do realise you're drunk, right? Touché. So, where's your death? <laughs> she ditched me to hang out with her lesbian friends. Wow, that's almost so sad, it's hilarious. Yeah, I'm hysterically laughing on the inside. I have to keep shoving nutter butters in my mouth to keep the laughter from coming out. You know, high school doesn't mean shit. Excuse me? Everyone thinks it's so important. Being popular, going on dates, getting voted prom king. None of it matters. After high school, nobody gives a shit. You go to college as a total loser, nobody, no matter how cool you were in high school. Then after you graduate college, you're totally fucked. You make a lot of sense when you're drunk. Hey, 10 years from now, you're going to be cooler than any of these kids. Mark my words, you got something special. Thanks. Are you trying to have sex with me? No, not yet. Maybe in 10 years when you aren't a total loser. Understandable. Hey, you want to dance? Because of course the teacher thinks that Shane is so special, like his deceased grandmother came to him in a dream. Like, like just this is God speaking through these characters to say, tell Shane that he's so special and he's going to touch so many lives before it all goes tits up a few years after. Shane is like a Mary Sue in his own story. Or would it be a Gary Stu? He's a Gary Stu in his own stories. But that's it. We did it. And there's some acknowledgements. I want to thank my audience who supported me since my first video to my Shane Dawson TV YouTube channel in 2008. Who's going to go back in time and tell him? But we did it. Together, you and I, we got through that. That was nice. It was nice until someone, either in my comment section or maybe even Rachel, said to me um, that uh, he has another book. He has a second book. So, yeah, fuck it. I've got nothing better to do. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. If you enjoyed it, do remember to like, comment, subscribe. I'll probably end up, if you do, like, do a bunch of likes on this video. If it gets to 10,000 likes, I'll do a second. I'll do a second one. Okay, see you next time, guys. Bye!